this cold case is never going to be solved. Almost 40 years after her killing, the lingering questions about what happened to six-year-old Avery Peaches Shorts and the would-be memories her family is missing now. Well, it's a hot, busy weekend in East Tennessee. Todd outlines your summer-like forecast, and we are live as Rhythm and Blooms kicks off. Also, the Sky Bridge in Gatlinburg is open. Would you cross it? Let us know as we show you the view from the top. 10 News is brought to you in high definition exclusively by Harper Auto Square. WBIR 10 News starts now. Right now, music is filling the streets of the old city in downtown Knoxville. This is a live look at the Rhythm and Blooms Festival that kicks off yet another year downtown. It includes three days of music and a free street fair. And Beth, you're just back from there. The energy building already this That's afternoon. Such a cool event that mm -hmm. our city's hosting yes. this weekend. Three days live music. Chief meteorologist in the middle of it all. And you guys were surprised by a light shower a few minutes ago. Tell you what, we had a very isolated shower. Checked out my radar scope and it was like, oh, that's right over Knoxville. Very isolated indeed, but that quickly moved on out. It did pour for about six, seven, eight minutes or so. And now the sun is back out and it's the proverbial sauna. Yeah, it's pretty warm to hot. It is going to be very warm in summer like this weekend. More on that weekend forecast coming right up. We are live at the Rhythm, Rhythm and Bloons Fest here in downtown Knoxville on this Friday evening and a good evening to you. Yeah, there's a look at our weekend forecast. Upper 80s on Saturday with a chance for some spotty storms and mid to upper 80s Sunday. So yeah, it's going to be hot and humid to start the weekend. More heat and rise in humidity. You really need to prepare for some summer like conditions. Don't overexert yourself outside. Make sure you stay cool and hydrated early and often. Maybe spend some more time in the shade or AC if you can. Here's a look at radar. We'll zoom on in. Yeah, we would had that very isolated shower that moved right from Anderson County around Oak Ridge. It uh, kind of dissipated briefly in West Knox County, then reformed right over Knoxville. You can see how that very isolated shower, again, not on radar long, but it was enough to pour for a little over five minutes and then the sun came right back out. Meanwhile, those temperatures are warm indeed. There's a current look from Sharpshred Sky Cam and right now it's a steamy 84 degrees with the breezy wind. I'll be back with more of the summer-like heat and humidity live from downtown Knoxville. Back to you, John, Beth. Todd, thanks very much. By the way, there are several road closures in the old city for Rhythm and Blooms. Much of East Jackson Avenue was closed through Sunday night. That's where you can find the festival's free street fair as well as free stage. And remember, some breakdown activities will continue down there through Monday morning. But they have artists, musicians from all over the country. The Black Lilies were performing, doing a sound check earlier this afternoon. They're performing on the main stage, but I believe they have seven venues scattered across the old city. Literally music on every corner. 10 News reporter Sean Franklin joins us live from the old city with what more we can expect at Rhythm and Blooms. Hey, Sean. Hey, John, it is a fantastic day for the Rhythm and Blooms Festival here in downtown Knoxville. We're here in the old city. The music is going. The crowd is here. I've really enjoyed it so far. This is one of my, one of my first times down here. It's been really fun. So this is the 10th annual Rhythm and Blooms Festival, and there are a couple of big changes this year. One is that they've decided to close down Jackson Avenue and create the uh, street vendors here. So uh, it's room for people to come and sell things that they've made, a lot of local products. And then the other big change, of course, is moving it from April to May. And that's really helped with the weather. I've talked to quite a few people who have really been enjoying the weather today. Of course, we had that, that quick pop-up shower that Todd talks about, but other than that, it's been really, really good. So I talked to Dylan Moore a little, a little bit uh, earlier. He is the manager at Barley's, and he says he's been enjoying it. He says festivals that Knoxville hosts help businesses like his because there are so many different types of people that come. Uh, they're pretty important. I mean, it brings in new clientele and people that normally wouldn't find their way downtown or outside in this area make their way down. And it's cool to see people that you don't see the same familiar faces you see all the time. So it definitely adds to the, it expands Knoxville more than it shrinks it. So. Because Knoxville is expanding and you can see it right here. Tons of people, as I said, a lot of businesses are enjoying it all up and down Jackson Avenue and around the old city as well. Tonight, of course, music by Tyler Childers. I was just talking to a couple of people. It's going to be a great show, guys. We'll send it back to you. All right, Sean, people coming from all over the world for this festival. Thank you so much, Sean. I met a couple from Britain. They've come the last six years. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun downtown tonight.
and we have five things you need to know right now about Rhythm and Blooms, plus the other weekend events in the Ten About Town section. There you can also get the latest weather and traffic conditions all free in the App Store. Amid that hustle and bustle of Rhythm and Blooms, a local hemp processor opened its flagship store in the Old City. Blue and Botanicals is now open for business in its 4,000 square foot retail space on Jackson Avenue. They are selling CBD products they produce, including vaporizers, sprays, capsules, and a lot more. There's also a cafe space where they sell hemp infused beer and foods. The company is working with about 130 hemp farmers in Tennessee and other states, and they extract CBD from the plants to make those products. Hemp is wholesome. Hemp is there. It can clothe you. It can feed you. And uh, CBD products derived from hemp have a lot of benefits uh, that I think we're just now even beginning to scratch the surface on. Blue and Botanicals has scientists and botanists on staff doing that work on a plant that is a close cousin to marijuana but doesn't have the high THC levels that produce a high. We take a deeper dive into the science on the night feed. It's been nearly 40 years since six-year-old Avery Peaches Shorts took a trip to a South Knoxville convenience store and never came back. Her body was found 13 months later. Her killer never charged. Tomorrow is Peach's birthday. She would have been 45 years old. 10 News reporter Mark Salinger spoke with Peach's sister about the cold case that may never be solved. Mark. Beth and John, Peaches never saw her seventh birthday. A killer robbed her of that celebration as well as many others in life. Four decades later, her family is left pondering what her life could have become. Time is no match for someone who will never forget. My name is Elwana Shorts and I am Peaches Shorts baby sister. Nearly four decades ago, Elwana watched as Peaches walked out of their Montgomery Village apartment on an errand to buy her mother a Coke. It was the last time she'd ever see her sister. I mean, my mama looked me out the window like, where is Peaches? Where is Peaches? As helicopters circled overhead and police officers walked the area, Peaches' disappearance triggered years of pain for her family. It would be 13 months before her remains were found. We was just crying. This is a whole lot of emotions. The 80s became the 90s, which turned to the 21st century. Still, no answers. Just a yearning for a closure that may never come. What was she saying? Was she trying to fight? What was her last words? What if she were still alive? Where would she be now? Would she have a family, kids of her own? She never saw age seven. Tomorrow marks another birthday celebrated at the cemetery. Please be 45. 45 years old. No one was ever charged. The person who dumped her body in the middle of a Blunt County field was never caught. I will forgive, but we will never forget. We want to know why. Tomorrow, the Shorts family will remember the rosy-cheeked six-year-old who ran around the neighborhood talking and playing with everyone. They choose to focus on those memories. They choose to never forget Peaches. Tomorrow is your day, and we will celebrate. Love you, Peaches. And investigators questioned one man, one main suspect, a man who had dated Peach's mother. He died recently, and the case remains unsolved. We'll send it back to you. Mark, thank you. A Wisconsin man who authorities say told a Monroe County teenager to record a video Seven of her County adoptive father raping her plans to take a plea deal. Court documents also say Brian Rogers took the 14 year old girl from Tennessee to Wisconsin. Rogers attorney and prosecutors told a federal judge today they are working toward a plea agreement. The girl's adoptive father and mother went before a judge on Monday. Randall Pruitt is charged with rape of a child and tampering with evidence. Christina Pruitt is charged with tampering with evidence and both are due back in court in July. Well, Knox Heritage is out with its list of fragile and fading properties. On the list is Knoxville College. The historically black liberal arts college was founded in 1875. Right now, all the campus buildings are condemned. Knox Heritage says that, along with the string of arsons and the college being vacant, are reasons it needs immediate intervention. Also on the list, the Prior Brown Garage. The garage on Church Avenue downtown dates to the 1920s and believed to be one of the oldest parking decks in the country. Knox Heritage wants to see it reused and preserved. Next up, the Eugenia Williams House, the 24-acre lakefront mansion since on Lions View Pike in West Knoxville, 
Eugenia Williams gifted the home to the University of Tennessee when she died in 1998. UT said last month that plans to sell the home. Knox Heritage says it hopes to draw attention to these properties and find ways to save them. Each property is different. Each property has a different challenge associated with it. They're not easy challenges, but we've seen positive movement already on some of these uh, properties that are listed and places that are listed, so we're hopeful. And you can see a full list of the fragile and fading properties at our website, WBIR.com. Right now, when you visit that website, you can explore Knoxville College and the Pryor Brown Garage, plus other historic places in Tennessee that have been left behind and our special web series, Abandoned Places. It is billed as the longest pedestrian suspension bridge in the United States. The Sky Bridge in Gatlinburg is now open. It is one of the top stories on our Facebook page, and we'd like to know, would you cross it? You can vote right now through the WBIR app, and while you do, 10 News reporter Gabrielle Hayes gives us an up-close look, and hears from people enjoying that view. Now they say the bridge is about two football fields above Gatlinburg, but the people on the bridge say it's not so much about the height, it's about the view. At its midpoint, the Sky Bridge is about 140 feet in the air, and many say that's more than enough to take your breath away. Yes, yeah, absolutely, it's breathtaking just to come and to see it. It's, it's just amazing. On Friday, hundreds of families experienced the bridge for the first time, and for some, it defied expectations. I thought we'd be swinging just a little bit. Not bad, not bad. Others say they were brave to begin with. No, actually, I'm pretty good with heights, so it wasn't a problem to walking on there. <laughs> the bridge reaches about 680 feet across. It's very long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> about five feet wide. Very high. The breeze is nice, though. <laughs> and surrounded by the kind of view that will leave you in awe. The, the view's beautiful. I didn't think about the height at all. Just, just the surroundings, it's beautiful. It's breathtaking. About 500 people can stand on the bridge at one time. And if you'd like to soak up the view, it's about 20 bucks a ticket for adults. To see this and to experience walking across this, it's, it's great. Most visitors say while the height was a little intimidating, the experience was worth it. And this won't be the last time they walk across the longest pedestrian suspension bridge in North America. <laughs> Would y'all come back? Yes. Definitely, yes. and bring everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of you have weighed in, and most of you are daredevils. Uh -huh. You say they'll give it a shot. Beth, you're not one of them. I don't know. I said no initially, but looking at the video, it looks more stable. All right. So maybe. All right. Live at 5 and 4 and the challenge ahead. Yeah. <laughs>